Hey everyone, in this video, let's check some of the tools you should be using if you are working with GraphQL. The first on the list is, of course, Graphical. Graphical is a great tool, and it's probably the OG of GraphQL. If you've seen or used or even just talked about GraphQL or you've read anything online, you've probably seen the graphical interface. The graphical interface is a great place where you can create queries, write mutations, subscribe to any events, view documentation, create fragments and learn about your graph. Uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's one of the things when I first seen GraphQL that I'd never seen before. It was this full kind of IDE like solution that allowed you to interact with your GraphQL schema in a way that just hadn't been seen before. Um, there'd certainly been lots of tooling around before that allowed you to kind of uh, annotate your API uh, and then output certain documentation, but this was an all-in-one tool that allow you to create career subscriptions and documentation, like I say. So I think this is going to be around for a long time. There is a new version of it coming that is going to allow you to embed more plugins and allow you to kind of add more to it, uh, which is really cool. So go check out uh, that out online. Uh, they've got a whole uh, GitHub issue uh, and kind of a roadmap planned out about what the version two looks like. And that includes bringing the uh, important uh, graphical uh, GraphQL Playground into Graphical as well. So some of the features that GraphQL Playground has, such as workspaces, tabs, uh, you know, response times, tracing, things like that, that will be coming into Graphical in some shape or form. There's a few discussions going on around how that look, how that should look like. Um, so get involved, go check those issues out, and you'll be able to see how you can help. Um, but yeah, Graphical is an interface which I think we've all seen, we all love, um, and of course it's the default in some kind of out-of-the-box solutions and servers. Um, and of course in some others it's GraphQL Playground. So instead of these projects kind of working against each other uh, and kind of you know implementing the features twice, they're joining forces uh, to create this all-in-one you know amazing experience for working with GraphQL. So go check that out and get involved and see what you can do to help. The next is going to be Insomnia. Now I've used Insomnia for many years, typically with REST APIs, but a few years ago they introduced the support for GraphQL and it's only got better. Since then, you're able to use the interface to write your queries and mutations and subscriptions and you can see those, uh, you know, you can, you can control space, you can see what fields are available, just like you could with uh, using graphical or graphql playground so the monaco editor there is really cool uh they've got that documentation built in there as well you can do some amazing things like uh you know create folders with all of your different queries and mutations uh or even subscriptions and share those with your team so you can join insomnia sign up to one of their paid plans and invite your whole team and you can kind of forget about copy pasting queries and mutations from places and just kind of log in and see these stored somewhere and being able to run these and you know save your authentication headers any additional headers you have for you know localization and and whatever else uh and you know any any anything there and you can certainly see the response cookies headers that come back all that kind of stuff from the server uh, insomnia will kind of surface that in a really nice ui so go check that out as well insomnia.rest that's an awesome tool that i find using um, and next on the list is going to be the GraphQL code generator. And I think this is really nice. If you've someone like me who's used maybe the Apollo CLI in the past to generate your, your type definitions from your schema, well, GraphQL code gener generator takes it a step further. They've got a whole range of different plugins that you can use to really customize the output and make it based on you know how you work with GraphQL. So go check out their website. They've got a bunch of different examples. Uh, you can create schema types. You can uh, create operation types for the front end. You can create all these kind of type definitions. Uh, and it's got support for React hooks and uh, you know some of the traditional HOC stuff. Um, if you're still using that, um, it's got a bunch of different things for different other you know other different implementations of, of GraphQL as well. So however you're using it, whatever stack or tool you're using. Uh, they have the support to kind of do that. And if they don't have the support, well, they've got a great system you can plug into uh, and kind of adapt it and, and build what you need to on top of it. So go check that out. They've got a, a really nice kind of interactive playground on their website where you can kind of see what your schema looks like, what you need to do to kind of configure the code gen. It's very, 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 very simple. Uh, and then you can kind of see the exporter types and then importing these inside of your IDE, such as VS Code, 
it just works so nice and it pretty much works out of the box as well you can just begin to type and you can see your types you can import them and reference them when you are creating all of your different functions and variables and things so go check out graphql code generator there's a whole lot more to it than what i've just described but that's one of the tools you definitely should be using uh, if you're working with graphql in 2021 next on the list is going to be one graph OneGraph is an awesome API tool that allows you to connect multiple sources of data and connect them together as well. So if we just have a look on the homepage, we see we have an example here that is fetching a refund from Stripe. And then we're able to kind of get the amount which is stored with Stripe. But then we're able to get the Salesforce information, such as the case that they may have raised. Uh, directly inside of there and OneGraph do all the hard work for you they've got a uh, you know a dozen or so different APIs you can uh, interact with and kind of all, they all work together which is really nice they will be rolling out more features this year for sure uh, and they've got a kind of a few features inside of their uh, you know the, their, their, their documentation such as auth guardian that kind of give you a really nice way of authenticating and uh, doing authorization with your api uh, that you should definitely check out so go to check out their documentation see how that works and they've even got support for plugging in additional apis as well um, which you can kind of experiment with so it's really cool go check that out it's really developer focused uh, and it's just really nice to get going there it is a paid feature as well um, but I think for now you can just kind of get going um, and, and just try it out and, and see how it works for you and, and see what it's going to cost when you want to kind of go into production and things. So go check out OneGraph. The team there is awesome and they'll be able to get you on your feet if you need any help using it. Um, and then next on the list is going to be GraphQLEditor.com. Now this is new to me. I've not used this a whole bunch but it seems really cool. And I'm certainly seeing a lot of people talk about this. It's a way where you can specify your schema and then you can generate mocks or kind of a faker response for those mocks. So if you've used something like Apollo Server in the past and enabled mocks, well, this allows you to take that a step further and really allows you to customize it and have everything else inside of the IDE that they kind of have online as well. So you visit the graphqleditor.com, you log in, you, uh, you, know, you have your schema in there, uh, you're able to generate all those types as well like I talked about that's kind of bundled in there if you annotate your schema with any doc, you know with any definitions descriptions and deprecations you can generate automatic documentation to have on your own website and I think that is really cool there's no longer the need to tell your users to go and visit the GraphQL playground the GraphQL bin install the plugin with insomnia to view your documentation, you can create beautiful docs all by using their tool. Um, and you know, that's just automated. It's all part of the process. It's really nice. Uh, and your team can kind of log in. They can, uh, if you're familiar with using GraphQL Voyager in the past, they've got a similar thing going on there. You can see how your entire graph connects to one another. So imagine you've joined a new team in 2021. You're working with GraphQL. You're a little bit unfamiliar with how everything connects. Well, they've got a way to help you understand how the graph is all connected. You can go in there and you can figure out what relations are going where, uh, what direction they're going, how, you know, is it one to many, one many to one, many to many, what does that look like? And of course, everything with GraphQL union type and interfaces uh, and all the custom scholars you may have, they document all that as well. And all of that is really, really easy to see. So you certainly should go check that out. It's really, really cool. Um, and then obviously, this wouldn't be a video without men, you know, this wouldn't be a video about GraphQL without mentioning Apollo Studio. Apollo is fantastic. They have an Apollo client library that allows you to make requests to uh, your GraphQL backend. Uh, then they obviously have the, uh, they've got kind of Apollo Federation, which is, it's a, you could think of that like one graph, but you would manage all these different services. And it's a bit different to maybe schema stitching if you've heard of that or you've used that in the past uh, and then obviously Apollo will have the Apollo server implementation in a bunch of different languages um, or they have a reference that's then replicated in different languages and that's really cool Apollo uh, studio it was formerly known as graph manager or engine or optics um, they've renamed a few times they've repositioned a few times but I think their offer now is really cool and when you log in you can click and you can add all your different services and once you've logged in here, 
you can see all of the fields, how much they're being used. Uh, you can use their explorer to intelligently create queries. It'll automatically generate the variables for you. Um, and then you can kind of just populate those and, and do what you need to do. So their explorer is a, is a bit like graphical uh, insomnia and GraphQL playground all in one. Um, but it's kind of, uh, you know, it's got their own flavor on top of it as well, which is really, really cool. So go check that out. You can learn about your history of your API, uh, perform any kind of health checks you need, um, integrate with things like Slack and Datadog and whatever you need to, to get that in, uh, get all the information you need about your graph. So go and check that out. Um, and then last but not least, Graph CMS is a company uh, that I work for. And uh, I still believe in this, this may be biased, you may think I'm being biased, but I still believe that the uh, are one of the simplest ways you can create a GraphQL server without really doing much. You log in, you ha can then create a schema using the schema editor. And if you want, you can use their content editor to create content, but you can also create or query content using their API. So if you create a model, post, you create then a relation to, I don't know, an author or comments, you can fetch and mutate data using the API or using the content editor. It's a really cool, simple solution uh, that supports um, you know, many, many, many different use cases. So go and check that out as well. I think that is a, a great tool for those getting started and obviously those at scale as well. Um, it's a really cool tool. So go and check that out. So if you've got any questions or if you, I'm missing something here that I haven't mentioned, please let me know in the comments what tool you're using with GraphQL and we can kind of just explore together. So all of the, most of the tools I've mentioned here either have Slack groups or they have GitHub uh, projects, discussions, whatever, where you can get involved. And I think this is one of the biggest things with GraphQL that has uh, just grown over the number of years. For, for, for a long time, it was, is GraphQL better than REST? Is REST better than GraphQL? Well, you know, thank God we don't have SOAP anymore. It, look, the best thing about GraphQL is a developer experience, and I think the community around it. There's a lot of discussions going on around there to just help people become better developers. Um, and GraphQL, the GraphQL community is no different. They do that as well. And there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of tooling that's yet to be built with GraphQL. So if you are new and you have an idea, everybody's welcoming. Everybody is willing to do their bit um, to try and make this thing work and you know help, have, help everybody out. That's what it's all about. So get involved. Let me know in the comments if you have got any suggestions and what you think of some of the tools that I've mentioned. Um, and if you want to chat about this, feel free to reach out. If you've liked this video, please recommend it. If you think this is going to be helpful to someone else, obviously, of course, please share this. I would, uh, I would love that and uh, appreciate that very much. So until next time.